The Las Vegas Raiders just wrapped up day two of joint practices with the New England Patriots. And the Raiders are officially done with training camp, which is kind of crazy to think. But it's officially over. The Raiders will play their preseason game in a couple days. And uh, it'll that'll be it. After that, it's like regular season, getting ready for the Chargers, which is in, in a couple weeks. But I want to talk about the joint practices that the Raiders had because day two, the Las Vegas Raiders defense was flat dominant, straight shut down, top tier. Now, I do understand the Patriots offense isn't that good. They're more of a defensive built team. But even then, day one, the Raiders offense destroyed the Patriots defense. Now, of course, things kind of flipped a little bit day two. Uh, according to the beat writers at the Raiders camp, guys that I personally spoke to, um, I am friends with some of the Raiders beat writers as well as some of the Patriots beat writers. I know at least two of the beat writers that work for the Patriots or are actually cover the Patriots and are currently at the uh, Henderson facility right now. Uh, but apparently on day two, the Raiders defense was flat dominant. Apparently Max Crosby was unblockable. Isaiah Wynn at some point couldn't handle him. Had to, He came off with the injury. Their backup tackle came in. Crosby dominated him as well. Uh, Chandler Jones got the best of Trent Brown. And the defensive line for the Raiders was dominating. Uh, the edge rushers could not be stopped. Max, uh, Mac Jones even threw an interception at one point after he got pressured. To no other than Jonathan Abram. On day two, Jonathan Abram gets an interception. You know, uh, yesterday we broke down the Jane Brown interception. And Jonathan Abram was close. Divine Diablo ended up tipping the ball and uh, Jane Brown caught the interception. Today, Jonathan Abram ended up getting the interception, uh, which is interesting, right? Because Abram isn't known for, uh, as the guy that gets interceptions. But either way, uh, apparently the Raiders defense did really, really, really well. We don't have footage of it, right? We don't have the entire camp footage, which, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it is interesting that Jonathan Abram obviously uh, had an interception and the Raiders defense dominated the Patriots offense. And I say that because the New England Patriots have spent a lot of money on that offense. The receivers, the tight ends, the offensive line, they invested in a first round left guard. All right? They put a lot of investments into helping Mac Jones have success. And of course, they are a defensive built team. And we'll switch over a little bit and just talk about the Patriots defense against the Raiders offense. Yesterday, we heard how great the Raiders' offense was. Devontae Adams was unstoppable. But today, things were a little bit different. The Raiders' offense was still firing, right? They were still doing a great job. But there were some issues with the Raiders' offensive line. Apparently, for the New England Patriots, guys like Christian Barmore and Matthew Judon and their defensive tackle, Oosh, all were able to get in there and absolutely be unstoppable. And the Raiders' interior offensive line specifically really struggled even their right tackle wasn't able to really block matt judon uh, and this is something a raiders beat writer specifically told me uh the and i'm not surprised with christian barmore because he's such a dominant player but i am surprised that matt judon uh, beat up on the right tackle now i don't know if that was alex leatherwood or if that was jermaine illuminor it's probably a mixture of both keep in mind you rotate in a lot of guys right yeah for the most part it's the ones versus the ones but then you rotate guys in Right, the defense will make some substitutions. The Raiders will, you know, move Parham to left guard, and then maybe John Simpson to left guard, and then they throw in Leatherwood. Right, so they kind of go back and forth. Um, but it was the Patriots defensive line that got the best. Of the Raiders offensive line, and you know, I, I think to myself, will the Raiders offensive line be ready week one against the Chargers, against Joey Boza and and Khalil Mack? Will they be ready? And I think that's going to be a big part of if the Raiders have success this year. Now, of course, another thing to note, uh, Devontae Adams is still Devontae Adams. He was absolutely dominant yesterday, could not be stopped. And today, he pretty much started off with some big touchdowns, some big catches. Um, but the Patriots defense did do much better today than yesterday, which is kind of interesting. Uh, some people have tagged me on Twitter and said, or at least responded to, to some of the things that I put out there. And they've said things like, you know, Derek Carr is having a great camp and he's dominating. But the thing is, Derek Carr doesn't get touched. So does this really benefit either of the teams? Like you're not actually bringing the quarterback down. So the quarterback has no worry in his head, right? About throwing the ball here or there, or maybe if he takes an extra second longer, he has no worry that he's going to get hit. And although that is technically true, and I don't know how much of an impact that actually has on the quarterback, because if a, if a defensive lineman gets a sack, the play gets blown dead, right? You still got referees and stuff there uh, to do those things. So 
Um, you know, it's not like Derek Carr is getting sacked. Like he's still getting the ball out. Now, I get it. There is that whole mental factor. Same thing with Mac Jones, right? Uh, there's this whole mental factor that you're technically not going to get hit that in a live game you do have. And I fully understand that, right? And, of course, this is one of the reasons why I say the Raiders need to get their first string guys out there during preseason, right? Uh, an actual game, right? Because of the fact that you want to see how your quarterback looks when a guy comes right at him. Is he avoiding things and getting the ball out? Right? The Bills had Josh Allen play this last week, as did the Chiefs had Patrick Mahomes playing this last week. And those guys look top tier still. And I'm sure Derek Carr looks great in camp, and I'm sure Josh McDaniel sees what he needs to see. But I want to see how the left tackle and left guard are together going up against, you know, whoever it may be, the Vikings or Dolphins or the Patriots defensive linemen. I want to see how Denzel Perryman handles when Cole Strange is coming directly at him to, to deplete him. All right, I want to see those type of things. And again, I know the coaching staff probably already knows kind of what's happening. But it is interesting, man. Uh, I love the fact that uh, some of these beat writers, you know, when I asked them questions, I actually spoke to one of the Raiders beat writers on the phone, um, was talking to a beat writer, just asking him questions, kind of getting a, a feel for how camp kind of goes. Uh, I know he was complaining about how during the 11 on 11 drills, how a lot of what you see is like in, in a distance. So it's very hard to really evaluate how the O-line's doing versus the D-line. It, it's kind of hard because you're not close enough. And it almost makes things like, do the Raiders do that on purpose? Do the Patriots do that on purpose? Like, do they put the media guys so far away that they can't see anything? Uh, but it seems like that was one of the things that he, he was mentioning. Uh, keep in mind, they did do like individual drills. They did do uh, seven on sevens. They did some O-line versus D-line type of things. Uh, nothing major, right? Just to kind of get warmed up, ready for the uh, team drills. Um... But camp is over now, man. And I, I think for me, like, it's crazy to think that camp started literally like two months, l less than two months, a like, month, month and a half ago. Uh, and it's already over and regular season's like right around the corner. And what's crazy is we're probably going to go through the regular season and playoffs are going to come around and then playoffs are going to be over and boom, it's like February and now the season's over and now we got this long ass dead period, right? Either way, man, I'm excited. I'm going to enjoy this season. Uh, I've been doing a lot of film breakdowns. I've been really working, trying to improve not only my videos and kind of how I make content, but uh, even the film breakdowns and stuff. You know, if I get one clip, I'm, I'm going to break it down, right? That, that's just kind of what I do. So um, I'm excited, man. I think there's so much out there. Hopefully we get some uh, training camp footage. You know, players have access to that. Sometimes they'll put things out. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, I should have another video a little bit later on. I'm gonna be going. I'm gonna be doing a, a back and forth with one of the Raiders beat writers, uh, Ryan Sakamoto, aka Beast Writer. If you guys know who, know who he is, he was on my channel a little while back. But um, I'm gonna be bringing him on probably around four or five today. So that video will probably post later on, and we'll be asking him a bunch of questions. If you guys have questions. Put them in the comments below, especially if you've at this point been watching for the last, you know, seven or eight minutes or however far we are into this video. Uh, let me know your guys' questions, man, and I'll definitely be asking them to him. Uh, we'll get a feel for how the Raiders camp kind of went. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.